up the radios, make sure everything's intact there. Oh, this will be the last pit stop for that team. But Strickland came into the pits one lap down. Now he's two laps off the base. He's a little assist there. That's a smart thing he's just done. If you feel this way, you don't need to be out there. And there's a good race car driver there. Give the race car over and not take a chance to hurt yourself and make it somebody else. Medical crews on the scene just in case. We've got some of our team in crew there helping get out and get that uniform that way cool off a little bit. And Jeff Burton comes on track in the McDonald's car. They'll try to run a couple of races this year. Burton will for Phil Marcosi. And perhaps a look at Winston Cup racing next season. And let's get it cooled down. Rusty Wallace. 220 laps, 80 to go. You know, Neil, sometimes the, the uh, oil tank is right behind the seat there. That looked like the seat might have had him real hot. But they're pouring water all over him. It didn't look like a stomach problem to me. It looked like heat. It's hard to say, but I'll tell you what, he didn't look too sporty there. That thing, he was, it was time for him to get out of that car. You know, we was touching on something before, right before that happened. We was talking about these pit stops. You like to be able to sit down and do your own strategy and decide when to pit. When these other teams start making you do things, you know, pit early, and then, like you said, Mike, you can't let them go after a few tires and beat you to death. So somebody's going to make a move here in a minute, and the whole field's going to kind of roll with a punch and change, and change their attitude what they're going to do. Well, I'll give you an example, Neil. Mark Martin's the fourth-place car, and he's gaining on Sterling Marlin. Harry Gant got fresh tires about 15 laps ago. He passed Mark like Mark was stopped, and Gant is now a straightaway ahead of Mark Martin. That's what tires will do for him. Look at Rusty Wallace go under Jeff Bodine there. That car is just flawless right now. He's able to drive anywhere he wants to. We talk about good flat track drivers. That's Put Rusty two, Wallace's name near the top of that list. Those two guys, yeah. both of them. Jeff Bodine's as good as there comes on flat track. So Jeff is the 13th place car. It leaves us 12 cars on the lead lap here at New Hampshire with at least one pit stop to go and another 75 laps of racing. We'll be right back. Man, we need a race here somewhere. You're not kidding. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Burton's flying. Look at him go past Ricky Rudd. Just zoom. Okay. How's that? I can't hear you. <clears throat> I don't see a race on the racetrack right now. Some days are like that. Let's see what we got. I think they Six in the eight car, turn two. How about that, buddy? Yeah. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> you did. Well, I said that last time. He finally caught up to him. I could see him gaining a little bit, and then he turned the six car sideways. Okay. Good to know. You know what? We'll let him speculate a little. Oh. Huh. What? No, I can't say it. I'll tell you later. Okay. Okay. Rusty Wallace continues to lead the inaugural Winston Cup event at New Hampshire. Welcome back to our TNN Live coverage. Mike Joy with Neil Bonnet and Buddy Baker, Glenn Jarrett, and Randy Pemberton on pit road. This has been the best race on the speedway. Sterling Marlin just got up to and past Mark Martin. That'll be for third place behind Wallace and Davey Allison. Sterling started his Winston Cup career at Nashville, Tennessee, his home racetrack, back in 1976 at the age of 17 on the circuit pretty much ever since. Finished second at Daytona earlier this month. Looking for that first Winston Cup win. Today could be the day. Mark Martin looking for his season's first win. I think Mark Martin's car is working quite well. You see Greg Sachs has been in the pit motoring right on by. You see Mark having to take a wider line there. 
This battle seven seconds behind the race leader. Well, there's the car's been lapped twice and got new tires on there. Look at him go. Just like Mike was talking about earlier, I mean, you just can't give up that kind of time. One of these no. leaders might make that early call, and it's going to beat him in the ground. And say, oh, okay. That's it. The difference, Neil, so far, nobody on the lead lap has come in for tires. Now, Jeff Bodine, as you see there, just coming out of Bud Moore's pit. As soon as he got lapped by the race leader, he came in for tires. Sterling Marlin almost in the fence at turn two. Now, way up in the marbles, as we've seen several drivers do today. Dale Jarrett has to check up in the middle of a backstretch and almost run over top of him and finally goes to the inside. I mean, you just, when he had that problem, he was going to drop anchor and start over again. Yep. Yeah, you get in the loose stuff up there. All the shavings off these tires are on the right-hand side of the racetrack. Ooh, still not too good. He got up there and he started sliding and it looked like he was going to tag the wall and he just had to stop almost and then go down the back straight away. We'll show it to you again. You get up into that loose stuff and get the tire debris on your tires and start sliding. And the second thing you think of is if you just get me out of this one, I promise I'll be good. Yeah, That's he, when he seen Elvis right there. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> You get out there in that stuff and you say, why did he stop so slow? Well, if he'd have kept going, he'd have ran in the wall coming off turn two. Yeah. I mean, you've got to get it down to control speed like driving on ice just to get the car stopped where you get it just regroup and go again. Ninth place. These fellows were battling for ninth place 100 laps ago. And they still do it. Bill Elliott and Bobby Labonte. like the carbon copy of what we saw 100 laps ago. Labonte on the inside, 11 miles side. Here he goes off the corner, pulls him off there. Labonte's able to get on the inside of time and time again. It's hard to get around that 11 car. Bill Elliott's best finish this season, sixth. Charlie Morris. How would you like to make a bet the first of the year of Bill Elliott win? finished any better than sixth up to this point in the season. You just wouldn't have, nobody would have been. You would have got better odds than that, winning that Powerball thing or whatever that was. Yeah, exactly. A big lottery check. Jeff Bodine almost hit the wall in two a minute ago. He got up into the marbles and had to bring it back down. Well, let me tell you, these guys are, this is the longest green flag run they've made. They're stretching it to get into that real safe window and trying to just pit with a few laps to go. This is the longest green flag run they've made, and they're using up their tires a little bit more. These cars are eight seconds from going a lap down. There are 12 cars on the lead lap. Wallace the leader, Allison second, Martin is third, Jarrett fourth, Marlon fifth, Rudd is sixth, Gordon seventh, Petty is eighth. Then this battle, ninth and tenth, Elliott and Bobby Labonte. Then Brett Bodine is 11th. And Jimmy Hensley is 12. Jimmy Spencer just made the move that we saw early. He's right up on the wall then in one and two. Yep. He had the same thing happen. Starting to happen to a lot of cars. Kenny Bouchard, the 85 car. And the race leader in traffic, Wallace. I think that's what happened to Spencer where he was trying to pick up the pace and not go a lap down and lose another lap. He sailed her off and won the lap before, and I mean, he was up there about to knock the fence down. Now, Spencer is racing Mus uh, Musgrave there for position. And Davey Allison closes up in traffic on race leader Rusty Wall. You know, we talked earlier, Davey was on that round of the bite out. We were talking about how much time was left. Now, do you take it out? When he comes in, they're going to look at one more run. You're not going to have that option to put it in and take it out. They're, going to have, they're really going to uh, reevaluate this thing and decide if they want to make that major adjustment. That's a good part of the radio communication between the pits and the driver. I guarantee you every lap they're talking about what can we do to make this car better for the last run. Well, they're about five laps from having to make that decision for the final pit stop based on the number of laps they've run the green thus far today. There are 65 left in this race. This is as close as we've seen Davey Allison get to that two car in a long time. I don't know if there's traffic or Davey's picking the pace up right here, but Sure closed it down. Rusty Wallace has had four wins, a bunch of top five finishes, and two horrendous flips this season. And his wins have kind of come in spurts. And he could be on another string here. His flips have come in spurts. Oof. Man, what, what some ride Rusty's taken. And I tell you what, an energy for a driver to have. Stuff like that just doesn't affect someone like Rusty. He knows they got good safe race cars. they got cars can win races. Kind of take them in stride and move on to the next race. Yeah. 